was done with the module, we left with only two chapters, very small two chapters, and then we done. And then we um, wait to write the exam. Lizzie, aren't we gonna do, aren't we gonna do some um, uh, rehearse not rehearsals revision sessions with you as well, even after the two chapters are done? Oh no, we we still going to meet until we go write the exam. So we still we we're gonna do exam. Have papers. a long journey. We're I'm gonna, just saying in okay. terms of the content. Good. We're gonna do exam papers till they come out of our ears. Yes, yes. Okay. So my plan is. Immediately after you submit your assignment five, then we know that you're done with your assignments. Then we start with the revision. So doing the revision, it means going back to the assignments, going through each and every assignment as part of the revision. That's one. After Once we're done with all uh, 11 study units, revision then we're going to do one exam paper together and then i'm going to give you access to the online mock exam that you need to take also your lecture will give you a mock exam but the mock exam that i will give you is the one that we will use as practice exams and then we can have discussions on those um questions but you need to take it. So the first one will not be timed. So you can do it as many times as you want. Um, you can do it in multiple days. It doesn't really matter. So I will give you access to that exam. It will be a full exam with 22 questions or 25 questions, similar to what you will receive in, the, in your exam. Then I will have um last exam revision with you which will be you will have to take an exam time a, a timed type of a timed exam online on our twitter site as well so that you can practice and see how you will fare in the exam when when the time cap so i'll give you um as many opportunities as possible so that you get used to the type of questions, you get used to working online and 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 while we're working in the background as well, assist I'm um, assisting you and picking some or making sure that we iron out some of the the challenging areas that you have. So we still have a long way, even though it's a short long way, because I don't know when you will be writing your exam. It might be early October or it might be in November, so depending, and also the the time, uh, the minute you start writing exams, I want to also limit the number of engagement that we're going to have because I need to give you time as well to do your other modules and write those exams because I know exams can be exhausting. So I want the whole of September to do exam revisions. So we're going to see how we plan that one out. Um, and yeah, so other than that, Lizzie, yes, if I may make a, re a recommendation or a suggestion when it comes to the revision, mm -hmm. I've been doing some revision and I found that my 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 huge challenge is around uh, you have X amount of questions in exam. They are they are randomized based on the chapters we have. Uh, you probably know would know better. Is it possible to take, for example, a chapter? And then we focus on exam questions just on that kind of content for that chapter. So we know what the exam question will look like. I don't know about the other guys, if they also struggle with things like that. When you do an exam question, you think, what the hell am I supposed to do here? I don't even know where to start. Um, I think the, the the best way, because most of the most of the questions we've been using as activities and exercises for every chapter that we have covered. Some of them comes from the past exam papers that I had access to. So we already did that. What you need to start preparing is um, to, pre to make sure that you understand the type of questions that you will get and make sense in terms of when you read the question, you need to know 
from which chapter this is and what you need to do with that. Because the, the exam paper, the logic will still follow the study unit. But I think there will be 25 questions. I'm, 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 sti I'm speaking under correction because when, you, when it was a face-to-face -face or a venue-based exam, it was out of 25. And because now with online time running out and so forth, the lecture might decide to limit the number of questions. I don't know. But let's assume the format still stays the same as the normal standard exam questions. So there are 25 questions. You have 11 chapters or so study units, not chapters, study units. Of those 11 study units, it means two questions per study units to make out 25 questions or 22 questions. Then you have three odd questions where you might get three questions for those. Like hypothesis testing, you might get three questions. Um, confidence interval, you might get three questions. And also in your discrete probabilities, you might get three questions because it's discrete, basic district, discrete probability, then it's binomial, then it's poison. So you'll, you'll never know, but until you know and understand the format of your question and your exam paper, you can only understand how you're going to tackle your exam by doing that. So I'm going to, I'm not going to focus on one study unit and then give you the questions from random question papers. We've done that. We're going to work through an exam format, exam paper, so that you get used to the exam and not the study unit per se so that you can identify the key things because now study units are combined. Now we're no longer working on specific concepts. We're now building up to and preparing you to write the exam. You will see, you, 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 will, you will see once we have everything formatted and online as well, um, it will flow like that. Don't worry too much. Uh, like I said, I've got you. We will do this together. Okay, so let's let's start with today's session. Um, so today we're going to look at study unit 10. You must also remember that you don't do ANOVA, which is if you're looking at your prescribed book, it will be chapter 10, which is analysis of variance. You don't cover that in your module. When we look at chi-square test as well, if you look at your mode, your prescribed book, there are so many other chapters or sections within that. We don't cover all of it. The only chapter you need to worry or learn is chi-square of independence or chi-square where we use contingency table. <clears throat> so, by the end of today's session, you should learn how and when to use the chi-square test for independence. So because chi-square test, like any other hypothesis testing, we with chi-square test, we're testing a relationship between two categorical variables. So with that, because we're testing the relationship, therefore, we need to follow the same standard in terms of hypothesis testing. So it means knowing how to state the hypothesis, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. We need to know how to find the critical value. We'll need to know how to calculate the chi-square test statistic. And we need to know how to make a decision and then conclude. All those steps, you need to know them because one of the options, like we did with hypothesis testing in study unit nine, the options that you might be given might be asking you all these steps, might be asking you to validate or to choose which one is the correct one in terms of a critical value or in terms of a chi-square test statistic or in terms of making a decision 
whether you are rejecting or not rejecting the hypothesis. So you need to know all the steps. Okay, so chi-square for independence. We use a contingency table to test the relationship between two categorical variables. Therefore, it means since we're using a contingency table, there will be a number of rows and a number of columns. You know the contingency table, we used it when we were doing the basic probabilities as well. Here, we're going to use that because one category will be on the row and the other category will be on the columns. And then there will be your observed values. And then we can calculate some proportions from the, which, or we can calculate what we call the expected frequencies. And then we use those to calculate the test statistic and then we make a decision. So in terms of stating the hypothesis testing for chi-square test, you need to remember the following. Your null hypothesis should always state that things are independent. There is no relationship. One category does not affect the other one. Always state two categorical variables are independent. If we were looking at the rain and gender, then we will say rain and gender are independent. That's how we will state the null hypothesis. The alternative will be the opposite of that. Then the alternative will say they are related, but we're going to say male and, oh, sorry, rain and gender are dependent. Therefore, it means they what they depend on one another. One affects the other, or one has a bearing on the other. There is a relationship between the two. Remember, null hypothesis always states with independent. Alternative will say dependent. We can always say also, in your null hypothesis, you can say category one is independent of category two. Alternative will say category one is dependent on category two. As long as in your null hypothesis, you state independent and your alternative, you state dependent. I'm stressing on this because you need to always remember that. When we want to make a decision, we need to calculate the test statistic. Calculating the test statistic, since we are given the observed values, we need to calculate the expected values. And then those expected values, we use them to calculate the test statistic. And the test statistic states that your chi-square test statistic is the sum of your observed value or your observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies squared divided by the expected frequencies. And once you have calculated that test statistic, we're going to use that test statistic to compare it to the critical value. So therefore it means the critical value of a chi-square test, we will find it by using our alpha. Here we're not going to divide your alpha by two because a chi-square test is a right skewed test. It is a positive skewed test. It only has one region of rejection. So your chi-square critical value will be on the upper side. So we use alpha. So our critical value will just be chi-square of alpha, but we also need to use the degrees of freedom. And I'm going to show you on the table how to find that degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom for a chi-square test is the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one, which is that. That will give you the degrees of freedom. 
and we use the alpha and the degrees of freedom. Go to the table. So your degrees of freedom will be running down. Your alpha values will be up. Where they meet is inside the table, that will be your critical value. We use that critical value to decide where the region of rejection will be, whatever the value is. We take the test statistic. We look whether it falls in the do not reject area <coughs> or it falls in the rejection area. And if it falls in the rejection area, we make a decision and conclude. We reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the two are independent. Okay. How do we then calculate this expected frequencies? Calculating the expected frequencies, easy. We look at the row total and the column total. So if you get a contingency table, let's say I said rain and gender. So let's say when, it, when it's gender, in this instance, we're going to use the two that we are familiar with. It's female and male. And when it's rain, whether it's raining, yes, or whether there is no rain. Days where it's raining, yes, or days that it's no rain, there's no rain. So when you get a contingency table like this, if they did not calculate the total, you need to calculate those total because we're going to use the totals. Because to calculate the expected frequency, we use the raw total times the column total divided by N, which is your grand total. So let's say if this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. <clears throat> when you are given the observed values, you just calculate the total by adding all those for female, whether it's yes or no. You say one plus three, or one plus two is three. Three plus four is seven. And your grand total, your n will be equals to 10. You do the same for the column because you need the column total. So this is your column. And these are your rows. So the column 1 plus 3 is 4 and 2 plus 6. Oh, 2 plus 4 is 6. I already have my answers in my head. So in order for you to calculate the expected frequency, let's say we want to calculate the joint expected frequency of female and yes. So the expected frequency of female and yes will be calculated by taking the row total of female, which is three times the column total of yes, which is four, divided by the grand total, which is 10. And that will give us three times four, is 12 divided by 10, which is 1,2. And that will be your expected frequency. To calculate the expected frequency for female and no, you do the same. You will say the row total So if I want to calculate, The expected frequency, let's call it E for, the, for now because I'm talking about expected frequency. Expected frequency of female and no, I will calculate it by using the row total of female, which is three times the column total of no, which is six divide by the grand total or the sample space, some, uh, the sample size. 
which then say three times six is 18 divided by 10, which is 1,8. And that's how you will calculate the expected frequency. You will have to calculate it for all the joint events that are happening inside the table. Once you have your expected frequencies, then you can calculate your test statistic. Okay, that is chi-square for independence. And once you do that, you make your decision and you conclude. Let's look at an example. Oh, before we look at an example, making a decision, like we already alluded to that, we said we use the critical value and we make a decision. And since I said our chi-square critical value, it's a, a, a right skewed test. Making a decision, therefore it means any value that falls bigger than the test statistic, if it's greater than, so it means it falls on this side, if it's greater than the critical value, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's how you make a decision. If your test statistic, if this is my chi-square critical value, the rule says, if your test statistic falls above the critical value, you reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, you do not. And that's how you will make a decision. So, like, I always use visuals to make a decision. It makes it easy. If you know how to remember the signs and the decision, you can use that or you can draw yourself visuals. It's up to you. You can remember the decision rule or use the visuals to make a decision. Let's look at an example. Here we have the meal plan selected by 200 students and it's shown in this table. We have the class standing and the number of meals per week. So the class standing is by types of students and the meal plans, those who prefer 20 week meal plan, 10 week meal plan, and those who prefer no meal plan. We have our observed values. We calculated our totals. We have our grand total, which should correspond to the same number of students that were selected. 18, the null hypothesis, which is the first thing that you do. You state your null hypothesis and your alternative hypothesis. The meal plan and class standing are independent. The alternative, meal plan, class standing are dependent. We need to calculate the expected frequencies because we will need the expected frequencies when we calculate the test statistic. Remember with the six steps of hypothesis, we say state the null hypothesis, state what you are given, and calculate whatever other measure that you will require to use to answer the questions coming up. Then find the critical value then calculate the test statistic and then make a decision. So the same thing here. So we first going to quickly calculate the expected frequencies. In order to calculate the expected frequency of fresh men and 20 week plan, we're going to use, so if we want to calculate the expected frequency, expected frequency of freshmen and 20, oh, my pen is spitting out, and 20 weeks, it's row total. So my row total is 70 times my column total, which is 70, divided by 200. And that will give me, I think, 
7 times 7 is 49. Uh, let me use my calculator because now I cannot use my brain anymore with big numbers. 70 times. It's 4,900 divided by 200. And that gives us 24.45. To do 32, expected frequency for 32, expected frequency for freshmen and 32, we use the row total, 70, multiply by column total, 88, divide by 200, and the answer you will get will be 30.8. And you complete the whole table. Like similar to this, for junior and 20 week for 10, row total is 30 times 70 divided by 200, and we get the expected frequency of 10.5, which is that. And all the expected frequencies are done. When doing a chi square test statistic, this is a good test statistic you can do even to test um, the relationship of variables for any type of work. But you need to always be very mindful that your, <clears throat> your number of records in the cells should at least be more than five in order for the chi-square test to work properly. If you're like, I use the example there where I had one and two and three and four, that's not the normal way of using a chi-square test. Your number of um, records or observed value, your n should always be greater than five in order for the chi-square test to work. Okay, so now since we have our observed values and our expected values, we can then calculate the test statistic. We have the sum of, remember the sum means adding all the values. So it means repeating this multiple times for all the records. The observed minus the expected squared divided by the expected. Coming here, observed is 24. Expected is 24.5. We need to square it. Divide by the same expected, which is 24.5. So your observed and your expected should always correspond. What I always do, you will see when we do the next example. Instead of creating another column, which might complicate things, or creating another table, I always write my expected values next to my observed values. So this will Instead of creating this, I would have created my expected year so that then I know which values I must substitute where. So you just write all your expected next to your observed so that you know that 24 will subtract 25 and divide by 24.5 again. And you do for all the values, add them together, plus you go to the next one, which will be 32 minus. 30.8 and you square the answer and divide by 30.8 and plus and 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 until you complete the whole table then you do the summation of all the values and calculate and find your test statistic and in this instance our test statistic is 0 0.709 you need to find the critical value as well. Finding the critical value, let's assume that our critical value we were given alpha or level of significance of 5% of 0, 0,05, which is 5%. So therefore we need to go and find the critical value, chi square of alpha and the degrees of freedom. Our alpha value is 0, 0,05, our Degrees of freedom, which is our row total 
so our degrees of freedom, which is the row, not the row total, the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. So if I go back to this table, just gonna clear all my ink. So if I come here and I need to calculate my degrees of freedom, which is my number of row minus one times my number of columns minus one. So I need to count how many rows do I have? Not, not, you do not include the total. So only for the observed values, we have one, two, three, four rows. So that four rows minus one. And how many columns did we have? One, two, three columns. Three minus one. And the four minus one is three times three minus one is two. Three times two is six. So therefore, my critical value here will be six. So I have, sorry, my degrees of freedom. So remember, this is four minus one and three minus one, which gave us six. So we have our critical value, we need to go find it on the chi-squared table. Bear with me, I just want to make sure I need to, I think I, I'm not sharing my screen, let me share my entire screen. Okay. I hope you are able to see the table, the uh, tutorial that I'm using is the one that I shared with you. I said you must start using that one. So let's go find our chi-square test. So I'm just going to make it smaller. So this is the T distribution. The table is also called chi-square, critical values of chi. So it's not called chi-square. So you just need to remember that the x squared is your this chi chai kai kai the sign kai is the one that we're looking for so this is the table i make it bigger so also remember ignore the top part we're only looking for the alpha values that are closer to the table not the cumulative probabilities there and our degrees of freedom, remember we're looking for chi-square of 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom of 6. So our alpha value of 0, 0,05, we go find it, that column there. Our degrees of freedom, which is 6, where they both meet. And that's our critical value. And our critical value is 12,592. Now we can go and make a decision. Draw a graph for yourself like that because it's a light left skewed. Just need to make sure that the, there is a longer tail on the right. And this will be 12, 592. That's where my critical value is at. And once I drew my graph, because I don't want to always remember this rule, where does my 0, 0,7094 fall? So it falls somewhere in the white area. Therefore, it falls in the do not reject. And in conclusion, we can make a decision and say since our chi-square test of 0, 0,79 is less than, because it's below, it's less than our critical value of alpha 0, 0,05,
of 12,592, we do not reject the null hypothesis. And in conclusion, we can state that there is not sufficient evidence that the meal plan and the class standing are related. Just for putting that, not sufficient evidence, or we could have just said, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the, the null hypothesis and conclude that the mill plan and class standing are independent. And that's how you make a decision and conclude. Any questions? We'll look at another example. Any questions? No questions. If there are no questions, now this one we're going to do it together. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention publication, HIV and AIDS civilians report, the number of AIDS cases in South Africa in 2007, classified by gender and race, use the information shown below in the contingency table to test whether there is a relationship between gender and race. Even though they... So, when you get a table like this, you can see that there are missing information on this table, but we can complete this whole table because we have the total in order for us to get this value for female, we can use, we know how many whites are there. There were 70 of them. So therefore, if we know also that there are 40 males who are white, out of 70, we can subtract. So here we can say 70 minus 40, and it will give us the answer for that one make it easier for us to complete the whole table. On the total for male, regardless of what race they are, we can just add them 40 plus 32 plus 48, and we can calculate that. And once we have all the values, also including 32 and 48, you can add that it's 32 plus 48. And the total, grand total here, yeah, you can either use that because it will be 250 minus those values. Or you can say 250 minus 70 plus 32 plus 48 will give you the answer for that one. Okay. So I want you to complete the total of all of them. So take out your calculator and calculate. We'll do step by step. I want the answer for female. What value do you get? 30. 30. 30. Ha. Um, what value do you get for blacks? What total do you get for black? So it means it's 18 32 plus 48. 80. 80. And we can do 250 minus 70 plus 80 to get the total for Indians? 100. Are they 100? So my 100, I think we'll have a problem. My, my values are wrong <laughs> on the slide. And uh, calculate Indians. Females? 52. And calculate males total? 120. 120. 130. 120. And female total? Uh, 130. It's 130. Okay, so I made a mistake there. So it means when we get to the uh we will fix it so i will rely on you to give me the correct answers there 
Okay, so the first step we need to do is to state, number one is to state the null hypothesis. State the null hypothesis. There is no uh, nope. um, relationship. Nope. No, okay. Nope. Is always it 250? Nope. Always, always state it and either with dependent or independent. Pardon? Race and gender independent. Race. Yes. Gender and race. Yes. yes. Race and gender are independent. Don't fall into the relationship part. Always remember that. In the null hypothesis, we always state it with independent. And your alternative will be what will be your alternative? Race and gender are dependent. Race and Gender are dependent. Okay. Step number two. We need to calculate the expected frequencies by using row total times column total divide by n and this is your n so let's calculate the row total for white male the expected frequency for white male it will be 70 i'm going to do the first one and you have to do the rest of it 70 times 120 because our row total is 70 our column total is 120 divide by 250 do the calculation 33.6 that is our 33.6 and continue to complete the whole table. Do for female, white female will be column total, oh sorry, row total 70 times column total 130 divided by 250. Thirty-eight point four. Black female. Forty-one point six. Indian. Male. And here is where I, I have incorrect values, but we can fix that. For eight.
sorry. I'm trying to, to fix as we go along. Come on. Sorry. Just wanna go back. Two way we way. Okay. Oh, sorry. And me uh Indian female. Fifty-two. Fifty-two. That will be fifty-two. So now we have our expected frequencies and we have our observed frequencies. Step number three is to calculate the chi square state, which is the sum of your observed minus your expected. You can see that I'm no longer using the frequencies, but it's one and the same thing. Observed value minus the expected divided by the expected. So I want to start it from here. So now I need you to do the calculations as well. So the first value is 40 minus 33.6 squared divided by 33.6. Plus 30 minus 36.4 squared divided by 36.4 plus 32 minus 38.4 squared divided by 38.4 plus 48 minus 41.6 squared divided by 41.6 plus 48 minus 48 squared divided by 48 plus 52 minus 52 squared divided by 52. Do the calculations. I can also use my calculator to the calculation. Let me use the fraction. So for the first one, it's 40 40 minus 33.6 squared divided by 33.6 so you can you can do the whole equation if you want or you can do it step by step. And when you do step by step, as you can see that you will have lots and lots of um, decimals. You need to keep at least four decimals in order to not to drop off uh, the decimals as early as possible. So four or five decimals should be enough. So I'm going to keep four decimals for this one. We might get different answers. And uh, now I forgot what the answer was. 1.290. Come on. 2.1.9.0. And the next one. One point one two five. 
will, you will need to to give it to me slowly so that I can write it. One point. One, two, five. Oh, you see this. One, two, five. I just kept three. You just kept three. Yes. Okay, anyone who kept more than three? Or did you only get three? Okay, no. Let me, let me just count it. Others, are you not calculating? You should be helping one another, yeah. I've got one for one to one. Sorry. Um, I've got one point one two five three. Okay, thank you. Keep four decimals at least. And the next one? One point zero six six C. Six 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 six. Yeah, we can say six six seven. Okay. Six six seven, yeah. We'll round it off to seven. And the next one. Zero comma zero comma nine eight four six. And the next one will be plus zero plus zero because mm. forty eight minus forty eight is zero. Mm. So we don't even have to do anything there and add them together. I get four comma three nine five six. Okay, so that is our test statistic. That's number three. Um, let's see, five, three, nine, five, six. Three, nine, five, five six. six, not a four. Oh. Three, nine, five. five. Yeah. Five, six. Okay. So now we go to step number four, which is making a decision. So remember the rule? I can write the rule here. It says if my chi square step is greater than my chi square crit. I will make a decision. I will reject the null hypothesis. But then it means it, I need to go find my critical value first before I make a decision. So this is a rule. So let's go find the. Uh, this is a rule. It's not the final thing. Let's go find the critical value. So finding the critical value or oh, our information here is not full. So let's say at alpha of 0, 0,01 at 1%. So if we want to go find the critical value, sorry, critical value of alpha and the degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom, and we know that our degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. So our chi-square alpha, our degrees of freedom, how many number of rows do we have? Three. 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 three minus one. Don't count the total. So we have three minus one. And how many number of columns? Two minus one. Two. Two minus one, and therefore this will be two, and this will be one, and then our degrees of freedom here is two. So it means our critical value will be of zero comma zero one and two. We need to go find this critical value and find the critical value on the table. So let me display the table. 9.210. So we're using that column. And that. Uh, 
that is our critical value, 9.210. Happy? So now, yes. I'm running out of space. Oh, come on. Ah, okay. Let me change my pen color as well. I must start writing a small. So, Anything that falls in that shaded area, we're going to reject. We found that our critical value our critical value was 9.210. Nine that's our critical value. We calculated our test statistic and we found that it was 4,3. Where does it fall? It will fall somewhere in the do not reject area. So we can make a decision and when we make a decision, we use the rule. We say since our, we can say since, chi square stat of four comma i'm going to use only two decimals or three decimals nine three nine nine six since it's less than our chi square critical value of zero comma zero one of i'm gonna use that number because i ran out of space we do not huh, reject the null hypothesis and conclude that. We do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no sufficient evidence to show that gender and race are related. And that's how you make a decision. Or we can say we do not reject the null hypothesis because gender and race are independent. Since we're not rejecting the null hypothesis. Easy, ne? Any questions? Yes, Lizzie. Yes. My problem is there on the first question, I was trying to get this race and gender are independent. How do you know, how do you figure out that statement? The statement, always know that for chi-square test, it's always independent in your null hypothesis for the two categorical. The two categorical variable, you will state the hypothesis using the independent statement. That's the only thing. It's easy, straightforward. It's not like with the other hypothesis testing way, you al always have to un um, understand whether is it a two-tailed test or a one-tailed test, whether must use a less than or greater than, whether there should be an equality sign to it or not. Here, yeah, straightforward. Contingency table, Chi-square test, null hypothesis, independent. Independent. Independent null hypothesis. No, it's fine. If it's always independent, I won't have any, like... Always. Always. No. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now it's your turn to do the talking. The certain media company published four magazines for teenage market. The executive editor of the company would like to know whether the readership preference for the four magazines is independent of gender. 
A survey among 200 teenagers were carried out. The following contingency, contingency table was obtained, and there is your contingency table. Before I look at all the statements, what is missing with this contingency table? Total. The totals. The totals. So you will need to calculate the totals for this contingency table. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? Number one, the expected value. So it means you will have to calculate some expected value there. So you need those totals. Number two, uh, please mute. Number two, the null hypothesis, which H not, is gender and magazine preference are independent. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect statement. Ne? The alternative states gender and magazine preference are dependent. Number four, degrees of freedom is three. Number five, the chi-square curve is symmetrical. We're going to answer all of them so that we just make sure that we understand. So I will ask you to just quickly calculate the total because we need the total to calculate the expected value of youth and girls. I'll give you some time to do that. And I'm going to ask you to calculate all the totals because you will need them for the next exercise. Exercise two is related to exercise one. So calculate all the totals. Total for girls is 78. 78. 56. 38. Grow fifty four. Life fifty two. Total for boys is one twenty two. And the grand total should give us two hundred. Okay, the question number one says, calculate the expected value for youth and girls. So you go to youth and girls is 12. So you need to calculate youth and girls. The row total is 78, column total times 38, divided by the grand total, which is 200. What do you get? 14.82. 14.82, which is correct. Number two, statement number two, the null hypothesis states that gender and magazine preference are independent. Is that correct or incorrect? Correct. correct. It's correct because null hypothesis, independent. The alternative? Depending. That will be correct as well. Find the degrees of freedom. Your number of rows, minus one, times the number of columns, minus one. How many number of rows do you have? Two. Two. Two minus one. And how many number of columns do you have? Four. Four. Four minus one. 
and what will be your answer? Three. And it means that is correct. That's correct. A chi-square test is a symmetrical distribution. Would you say it's a symmetrical distribution? Even when you go to the table, that will show you that what kind of a distribution is this? What shape does it have? It's a, it's a skewed distribution. So which makes number five the option that you are looking for. Because a symmetrical dis uh, distribution will be a normal distribution. It will have a belly shaped calf, a normal belly shaped calf, even though my belly shape is not correct, but it will look like that. And a chi-square is a skewed distribution and it's a right skewed distribution. Okay, so we only calculated the expected value for youth and girls and which is that one. So which is 14. Point eight two. You need to calculate the expected value for all of them because we need to go and answer the chi-square test. So Did I replicate them correctly? If you have the expected values, just call them out so I can write them. So the first, the very first, Okay, for 18. Yes. 21.84. For 20, it's 21.06. For For 26, it's 23.18. 23 or 28? 23. 23.18. 18. 18. 18. 18. For 34, it's 32.94. For 24 is 31.72. Thank you for teamwork. Now let's complete our chi-square set. Our chi-square test statistic, 18 minus 21.84. Divide by 
21.84 plus 12, that's 12, minus 14.82 squared divided by 14.82 plus 20 minus 21.06 squared divide by 21.06 plus 28 minus 20.28 squared divide by 20.28 it's gonna be a long long one so i just completed the first line <sighs> I'm just going to complete the rest of the lines. So then somebody must start doing the calculations. I got six point eight nine one six. So you calculated all of it. Yeah, but the guys must please check for me. Oh, yeah. Answer number three. Yeah, I got the same. Six comma eight nine one six. Six eight nine one six. Number three, you. Number three. Six comma eight nine one six. Do we all agree? Or are we still calculating? I'm still calculating. <laughs> I don't know how they got it so quick. Excel fire. Excel spreadsheet. Oh. Wow. Okay. No, they say that the laziest people are sometimes the most creative, so. Wow. <laughs> yes. Are you willing to share that spreadsheet with us? Probably maybe? we can also share that spreadsheet on um, as part of. Yes. We can do that. Okay. So mine, mine is a little different. I have a calculator that has a stacked uh, menu. So I, I have values I can manipulate and move them around. Oh. I guess with manual calculations, we're going to take forever to get to the answer.
Are we still calculating? Still busy. Yep. Okay, let me know when you're done. Down, I've got six point eight nine two. Okay. Can unmute you can mute whoever has their mic on. So with the case here, you can uh, do up to three digits, up to three, three values before it allows you to continue. So yeah, so it will take you forever. Okay, you can get the answer for the three. Which is one point two six five. Are you all done now? Yes. Did you get the? Yes, I got the same answer. Okay. Others, are you happy? So even um, in the exam, you will not get a table with so many questions where they ask you to calculate the test statistics on its own and then it's time consuming. They will limit that because of the time of the number of hours that you have for the exam. But for your assignment, you might get a bigger table like this. So it means you need to pace yourself. You need to be able to do the calculation and make sure that you calculate correctly as well. So that is the test statistic. Exercise number three, consider the following table. Also, you're given a contingency table of the bias age and the car size bought. Which of the following statement is incorrect? At alpha of 0 0.05, the critical value is that. So it means you need to go find the critical value by using your critical value of chi-square alpha and the degrees of freedom, which is your road, number of rows minus one, minus the number of columns minus one. Number two, you need to check whether the hypothesis test is correct. It says the bias age is independent of the car size bot. Number three, 
you need to be able to calculate the test statistic. So it means you need to calculate the observed, the, sorry, the expected frequencies. And your expected frequencies is your row total times the column total divide by M and then calculate your chi-squared stat test statistic, which is the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected in order to get the answer. And to find the degrees of freedom, which we already you should have already calculated it there, which is your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. And number five says the null hypothesis is rejected. So you need to have the test statistics calculated and you need the, the critical value in order for you to make a decision. In order for you to make a decision. So you will need that critical value and your test statistic. I'm going to give you time. Let's say I will ask again at half past. At half past. So take this five minutes to try and work out some of this.
How we doing? Can we answer the ones we already have? Yes, let's do that. And then we can do the others. So number one, at alpha of 0, 0,05, what is the critical value? So did you find the degrees of freedom? Yes, it's four. Okay. So the number of rows, there are one, two, three. There are three, ne? Yes. And the number of columns, there are also okay. three. So that will be two times two, which is equals to four. So that is our degrees of freedom. So you need to go to the table. We need to find of zero comma zero. They said zero comma zero five, ne? Yeah. We need to yes. find zero comma zero five and four. Nine comma four eight eight. So number one is correct, right? Yes. Number two, is that correct? Yes. Also four is correct since we've already calculated it. Yeah. And four is also correct. Now what is left is the chi-square test. Have you calculated it? It means you need to go calculate the expected. Can we do the spreadsheet? Can they share the screen and show us how they do it, Miss Lynn? On their spreadsheet. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing. I'm not sure. Are you able to share your screen? Uh, no, my you, no, you need to give permission. You need to. You need to be able to. Create. Um, I need the table. Sorry, let me see if I can. I'll have to end the show. Uh, go out. Okay. Let's do this. And you are. Who am I giving permission to? <coughs> Mine was in the calculator. Who, who's our Excel colleague? Um, that's the person I'm looking for. Maybe he's on mute. Um, the person who said they are using the spreadsheet, I want to give you permission to share your your screen. But I don't know who is that. Oh, uh, sorry, I stepped away. I was on a on a call, so I oh, didn't. I can't share, that. but yeah, I can't share about the new the new question. But I can show what I did with the old one if that will help. But I don't. No, it's fine. You can show with the old one. Because I was gonna. Um, I think now you should be able to share. And 
while you do that, I will also try and do for this question that we busy with. Okay, so you guys want to show how I, how I calculated it in the spreadsheet? Yes, they want to see the spreadsheet, yes. Oh. The spreadsheet. Um, well, I, I obviously plotted first the, the contingency table. Uh, I calculated the expected values next to them, uh, next to each of the uh, of the values. And then when I was done, I just added everything up below. Uh, um, are you interested in the formulas that I use? It's basically the same thing that we did in the exercise, but I just put it in a in an Excel formula, and I can send it now. I have it ready to send it to you on WhatsApp if you wanna if you wanna use it. Uh, I think you can send it to on the WhatsApp when the class is over as well. Okay. Left with oh, almost twenty minutes. Okay. Um. Unless if you want to send it now, and okay, they can use then it, it will be yeah. The next, yeah, you yeah, can let me send that as well. Okay, let me just uh, stop share it. Okay, I just sent it on the group chat. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. If you need any help, uh, you can uh, text me on side. Liz, can you kindly show the table again so we can populate on the spreadsheet? No problem. We can do that. Okay, let's do that. Are you winning? Changing the numbers, but yes, we get it. Thank you.
Okay. Are you still busy? I'm done. <laughs> Sorry. I'm done. Let me share my screen again. My entire screen. Oh, sorry. I'm still sharing a window. I want to share the entire screen. Okay, so we were given the observed values. These are our observed values, and I calculated the totals. And also the totals for our values. They are our total for our observed. And then I used another column to calculate the expected values by using the formula so which is the row total times the column total divided by the grand total for all of them so if you go to the next one you will see the calculation for each one of them then once done then i went to do this the formula observed minus the expected squared. I was lazy to do the square. Oh, maybe it's because I was lazy to go find the formula for the square. We know that the square is that value multiplied by itself. So I said observed minus observed minus the expected. And I multiplied the same thing again, divide by the expected, which is my C12, which does the ex observed minus Oh, observe minus the expected square times that. And I did for all of them, for every block. Oops. I did for every block, observe minus expected square divided by the expected. And once I have calculated for all the columns and rows, then I added all of them. And that gives me my test statistics. Do you also get the same when you use the spreadsheet? Did you get the, the same answer? 14.62. Which is the same as what they have and they said you must leave your answer to four decimals so or are you still busy on the spreadsheet hello i, th I think we're busy with excel, Is with excel excel hello. sorry Okay, let me open that Excel. I have to because I'm going to fiddle through my my laptop. Let me download it as well. Okay, we can do the same. Let's see if we can do the same. Shit. Now you see my messages. Okay, I just want to repl replicate the same. So in terms of this, we have three columns. So you just need to make sure that you add another row and change this to under 30, 30 to 45, and over 45. And then do the same at the top. We have small. You'll need to know how to use Excel to do this. 
so you need to change that to small. And this is medium. And this will be net. And this will be large. And that will be large. And because we don't have these last two columns, there will be zero there and zero here for the sake of the formulas as well to keep everything still intact. Okay, and we're going to add the object on the color coded. You add the object 10, 24, and 45. Everything should work out. I need to adjust the formula because the formula only look, looked at the two columns. You just adjust your formula by dragging and press enter. And it should be for all of them now. And also, I can just... drag this formula because I need to keep the same. I'll just have to adjust it, drag it so that it still reads the same values. We'll also need to adjust that. Just now we have 22 there, 42 and 35 and you will just need to adjust your formula. The same thirty four forty eight and forty. So 300, and I guess also here yeah, we'll have to adjust because there are three now. I have to add the third line and Don't have to worry about that one. So this, giving the square, can just drag the formula it should work. It takes your observed minus your expected square, divide by the expected, which works fine. And so on this one, it will work fine. The last column is this, which we can also just hide away. Because we don't need that. And this, we need to add. All the values, so I should get the same. Can just adjust it like that. Oh, come on. Thank you. 
some reason. Then wanna add up the bit. Lizzie, mm -hmm. will it be possible for you to share your spreadsheet as well on the group? Yes, I will share it on the chat as well. Thank you. Uh, something didn't work out right. So let's double check my values with those values so that. Thirteen, we got it right. Zero point zero two. That's correct. 1.19, that's correct. 1.27, 0, 0.51, 0, 0.58, that's correct. It okay. is on this one, sorry. On G5, you've got the incorrect one. Should be 48.8. Yeah. On G, oh yeah, yes, I see. Sorry, I see, I see this calculating it wrong sorry we should be using that column sorry I need to adjust all of this at the bottom I am not getting the right values as you can see I get the same answer So we will share both of the spreadsheet. Um, Lizzie, you must start offering Excel courses as well. I do actually. Oh, you do? Okay. I do as part of the facilitation of learning for UNISA. I do offer classes for research analytics and basic statistics, and we do a whole lot of things other than just discuss um, content because it's literacy. So we we do also offer options in terms of using calculator we we have dedicated sessions on how you use your calculator how you use your excel to do um the calculations you will see next time when we do regression you will need to use the data analytics or the data analysis we will use this to do the regression models but that is discussion for the next few weeks to come. So yes, anyway. Uh, sorry, before you start, last question. You converted the decimal to four decimal places. Can you show us also how you do that? OK, so um, on the tab, there is a number tab. There are arrows here with decimals. So it increase or decrease decimals. You can use that. Thank so you. this will increase the decimals. If you press it, you will have more decimals. If you want to reduce them, you just use that. Also, you need to pay attention to your spreadsheet as well, because depending on your spreadsheet, how you you have um, formatted your spreadsheet, sometimes some spreadsheet you use a comma, as in like a comma, comma this comma uh, on my one my decimals which are my commas are points and I think also on eight um, Alistair's one decimals are points so it was fine so yeah that is to reduce the options Okay, so going back to our presentation slide. So we stopped at exercise number three. There are other activities. We will look at some of this on Saturday. So it should be easy. You can go and start answering some of these activities 
on your own. You will have the Excel spreadsheets, you have the notes. You can use that to answer some. And then on Saturday, when we do more activities and exercises, then it will refresh your mind. And then there are a couple of exercises here. Yeah? As you can see, most of them. OK, so for exercise four, you need to calculate the chi-square test. Exercise five, you need to know your five steps of hypothesis testing in terms of chi-square in order for you to answer all the questions. Also, exercise six, you need to know all your steps of your chi-square hypothesis testing in order to answer which one is the correct one. And the next one as well. So there are a couple of questions on here that you can go through. Just to conclude, because we left with one minute, you have learned how and when to use chi-square test. We have done the calculations. Always remember that with chi-square test, stating the hypothesis testing, the null hypothesis, always we state it with independent. The alternative will state dependent, which means is there a relationship between the two categorical variables. You also need to be able to calculate or find the critical value. Remember your critical value, you find it on the critical value for chi, critical value of chi square. And we use the alpha and the degrees of freedom. And your degrees of freedom are your number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. You also need to be able to calculate the chi-square test and we shared with you the tools that you can use to calculate the chi-square test whether you use the excel spreadsheet or you use the formula the way we have calculated it in the notes which means you also need to be able to calculate your expected value which is your raw total times your column totals divided by the sample size or the grand total. And you should be able to make a decision by looking at the rule, which states that if your test statistics is greater than your critical value, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. With that, it concludes today's session. Any question, comment, or query? I have a feeling this assignment is going to be better than the others. Hey. All right. So if there are no more other comments or questions. Uh, sorry, Liz, I have a question. Yes. Uh -huh. I think assignment three is open again. So okay. if let's say I didn't do well on assignment three, can I attempt again? Or it's for those who didn't do it at all? No, if no. you still have submissions, if you still have, if you didn't use all your three attempts, then you can do it. So as long as an assignment is open, you can redo it as long as your attempts are still there. So if you only did two attempts, yes. now you can do your third attempt on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, so also the assignment for is extended. If you haven't used up all your attempts, you can remember you can do you can use up all three of them. The higher score will be captured. So take your chances like with assignment five coming up. Like I always say. The first submission use it to get an idea in terms of what type of questions are there on your assignment? Uh, I'm going to let me first stop my recording and then I'm going to talk to you. Just wait two, two more minutes. Um, thank you for coming through today. Uh, let's stop the recording. Because I, we don't want to get into trouble.